All right, so here I got a blank project open on my phone. You can see the file name is position, rotation, scale, animation. So I'm going to go to the plus icon at the bottom here and let's go ahead and insert a shape to the project. I'm going to insert a polygon. So let's tap on this polygon. You can see a polygon is added to the project with the default name polygon one layer in the timeline. So you can see here the layer is of two seconds, all right? So I'm going to tap on the polygon. You can see a menu pops up. So I'm going to go to the move and transform section, all right? So let's tap on move and transform. And these are the options available in this category called move and transform, all right? So this area is called the control pad, all right? And these are the four parameters. The first one is called position and the rotation scale parameter. And then the last one is Q. All right, so let's get started with the position animation. So while this position is highlighted, I'm gonna go to this control pad, right? With this control pad, I can now play around with the position of the shape. So right now you can see the polygon is located right at the center. So if I want to move it onto the left or to the right, I'm gonna come here to this control pad with my finger. I'm gonna move it onto the left or I can move it onto the right, wherever I want. And I'm gonna move it onto the left. You can also see if you are right at the center, there will be a red guideline. You can see here that indicates you are at the center. All right, so let's go ahead and do some keyframe animation now. So make sure the playhead is right at the beginning, right at this location. I'm gonna go here to this diamond icon here to add a keyframe. So let's tap. You can see a diamond has now been added to this layer at this location. So this diamond is called the keyframe. So this keyframe has now recorded the current position value of this polygon. So this polygon is currently located at this position. So you can see the X value of this location is 179 and the Y value is 540. So this keyframe has now recorded the current position value of this polygon. So I'm gonna go on the timeline, scrub it on the timeline with my finger and then move it onto somewhere about maybe on at one second or so. With my finger on this control pad, I'm gonna move the polygon onto the right somewhere about here, all right? So you can see already a keyframe has now been automatically added by Allied Motion. So this keyframe has now recorded the new position value of this shape the polygon, which is somewhat about, you can see the X and Y value. So this has now recorded this. So now if I go here, you can see the animation. If I go ahead and play, you can see we have this animation. All right, so all you have to do is you need to give the first keyframe over here and the rest of the keyframe will be automatically added by a light motion. So if I come over here, maybe around at 1.28 frames, one second, 28 frames, I'm gonna, with my finger, I'm gonna position this. You can see a keyframe will be automatically added now. So if I just drag it, you can see a keyframe has now been added. And this new keyframe has recorded the new position value of this polygon. So we got now three keyframes, the beginning, middle, and these, the last keyframe, and this is what we have. So this is the position animation of the shape. All right, so let's go ahead, go to the beginning, and I'm gonna go to now the rotation parameter. So if I tap rotation, you can see all these keyframes that we just added, they are now grayed out, okay? Because the keyframes that we're gonna be adding on rotation parameter, they are independent of the position parameter. So if I tap position, all the keyframes are now, you can see they are bright. If I go to rotation parameter, they are now grayed out. All right, so let's go ahead and maybe somewhere about here, I'm going to add a keyframe on the rotation parameter on the zero value, zero degree. So let's tap. You can see a keyframe has now been added. So this keyframe has now recorded the rotation value of this polygon, which is zero. So I'm going to go onto the timeline, maybe around at one second or so. Now I'm going to give some rotation. So let's go ahead and give some rotation just like this. You can see automatically a keyframe has now been added. So this keyframe has now recorded the value of rotation value, which is minus 102 degree. So if I go a little forward on a timeline, I can now just say, let's say I'm gonna reduce it to maybe a 21 degree or so. And now if I come to the beginning and give it a play, you can see here, we get this rotation animation as well as the position animation. All right, so let's give it a play. You can see we have this. All right, so now let's go ahead 
and go to the third parameter, which is the scale parameter. So I'm going to tap on the scale. You can see here we get some scroll wheel over here. So we can increase or decrease the size of the shape with this scale parameter. All right. So right about here on the, at the beginning, I'm going to add a keyframe on the scale parameter. Let's say tap and you can see this scale, this keyframe has now recorded the current size of this value of this polygon. OK, I'm going to go a little forward on the timeline. I'm going to increase with you know, I'm going to increase the size on the you can see here we can increase or decrease. I'm going to increase the size somewhat about this size and go a little forward on the timeline. And then I'm going to reduce it down to, you know, a little smaller or something like this. Right. So you can see already we got two more keyframes right here and over here. So now if I give it a play, you can see here we get three animation on position, rotation and the scale parameter. So position is about animating the position value of the shape. Rotation is, of course, animating the rotation properly. And scale is making a shape smaller or bigger, just like this. OK, so let's go ahead and do some editing on the existing keyframe. So I'm going to go to move and transform once again. So you're going to see the where, whichever parameter you tap, you're going to see those keyframes. So right now we are seeing the keyframes. You can see these are the position keyframes. If I tap on rotation, these are rotation keyframes. Everything else is now grayed out. This is scale keyframes. So I'm going to go to the move and transform over here and onto the position parameter. And you can see the second keyframe, if I come over here and place the, place the, par the playhead on top of an existing keyframe, that keyframe gets highlighted with some green border, green outline. And also over here that it becomes a negative, a minus symbol. You can see if I go a little forward backward, you can see it is a plus. That means you can add a keyframe. But if you are on top of an existing keyframe, which means you can delete that keyframe. Now, if I go here and say tab, you can see now that keyframe is deleted and you can see that position has now come over here. Now, if I give it a play, you can see we have just this animation. Now, if I want to get it back, I'm going to undo it and let's go ahead. You can see we have now that keyframe added back. Now, let's go ahead and I'm going to move over here somewhere about here. And if I want to add a new keyframe, if I want to move, let's say I'm going to move this shape to somewhere down. So I'm going to come with my finger on this control pad. And I'm going to just bring it somewhere about like this. You can see here and keyframe has now been added to our existing animation. Right now you can see if I give it a play, we get this animation just like this. All right. So if I want to delete it, I can either undo it or just place it on top of that keyframe. And let's say delete, it gets deleted. All right. So if I want to now at just the timing of animation, you can see here the second keyframe is around at one second. OK, now if I long press on this keyframe, you can see here that it becomes enlarged on the top just like this, which means you can now either drag it onto the left or drag it onto the right. So if you want to make this animation a little faster, you can make you can drag it onto the left. You can see if I drag it, it will very quickly move from left to the right because there are very few frames from here to here. You can see here it's going to move very fast and then it's going to come down. OK, and if I want to make it slow down, I'm going to tap here. I'm going to bring it to somewhere about here. Now, if I give it a play, you can see it's going to move very slowly because this keyframe you have placed it very far away. All right. So this is about the basics of keyframe animation on position, rotation and scale parameters. And you will do this on this move and transform section over here. All right, so let's understand how to export our videos. So we can tap on the right corner over here, the share icon. And here it is the export and share features. First of all, it is the video. You can export, tap and export. Also, you can tap on this arrow to select further options over here. So it's going to show you some data over here, available space in your mobile device, and then the current size. And then you can choose the resolution up to 1080p. And then you can select the codec to H.264 ABC and then HEVC, basically MP4 files. You can also select low, reduced, or full, full quality, that is. So you can reduce the quality from low to high. And then you can see if I reduce it, also you can see the size of the, the video will also come down or go up. You can see here. 
So depending upon how you want to export, you can choose any of these. And sometimes we want to make it very low so you can see how much it is over here. And then tap on export to render out the video. But let's go back and see some more features. You can also export as GIF content. And also if you tap on it, you'll have some more options over here, just like the video. So you can go back. And then you can also have image sequence. Okay, so for many purposes, like for gaming, you may prefer some image sequences. You can also export your Elite Motion project file and share with anybody through a link, but you cannot save it onto your device. You can share by uploading onto the Elite Motion server or website, okay? And then when you upload it, it's gonna give you a link and then you can share that link with anybody. And if you sh anybody who has that link can open your Elite Motion project. And then you can also save it as a PNG, the current frame. Let's say, go ahead, and if I go ahead and tap on the PNG of this, and if I say export, so it's going to take a PNG of this current frame. All right, so these are the options of export and share, and I'm going to see you in the next video.